This is the MG4 X Power, a hyper powerful version of the MG4 EV, which is rated really well here on Chasing Cars. But unlike rear wheel drive versions of this EV, the X Power is dual motor all wheel drive and it has 320 kilowatts. It has some astonishing performance claims, but can it seriously be good enough to have any idea of taking on greats like the Volkswagen Golf R, the Audi RS3, or the AMG A45? A comparison's forthcoming, but today we are going to road test the X Power in isolation. We're at our test track, of course we'll be doing independent performance testing, and I'll also be road testing this car on difficult Australian country roads to see whether it has the chassis to match the power. In this video, we'll do our usual thing. We'll check out the interior, we'll discuss the practicalities and the running costs, and then we'll head out on road and on track in the 2024 MG4 X Power. Before we start, hit subscribe. Chasing Cars, honest reviews of your next car. Brought to you by Budget Direct. In many ways, the interior of the MG4 X Power reminds me of when the Hyundai i30N came out. The interior is just not that differentiated from the base car. Neither was the i30Ns, at least at first, until it got some cooler sport seats. That's exactly the same deal with the MG4, which is barely any different to a standard version or to the Essence version, I should say. You do get a contrast stitch in sort of like a watermelon color. It's not really an orange on these seats, which have vinyl on the outside and like an ultra suede on the inside, which is a nice way to do a seat, but they don't have much bolstering left and right. So you do tend to get chucked around a little bit in the corners. Some proper sports seats would have been suitable for a car like this. But let's not forget the price. $59.90 plus on-road costs. This is more expensive than something like a Golf GTI, but much cheaper than a Golf R, and especially a lot, lot cheaper than an A45 or an RS3. So let's keep that in our mind. In terms of the basic packaging here, it's actually pretty good. The technology works well enough. There are a few software bugs, including a very annoying one related to the direction selector, which I'll show you when we go for a drive, but the basics are good. The material quality is actually generally pretty nice. Stuff like hard touch doors does feel down market, but everything is actually screwed together very well. Better than an A45 that I've driven in recent years, which was actually quite rattly and creaky this is better, but not perfect. There is a bit of a creak in the B pillar on the driver's side of this particular car. Leather steering wheel feels good. No paddle shifters for altering the regen sucks because you do want to interact with the regen on this car. So you've got to go through the touch screen for one pedal drive, or you can cycle drive modes at least on the spoke over here, but that's slim pickings. The Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connection, that is wired, that feels a little bit old school, but otherwise everything else kind of works fine. You've got hard keys for things like your climate, on and off that is, you've got to do the temperature and fan through the screen. But you've got your demister and your volume as hard keys, which is great. Wireless phone charging here, loads of storage down here, very low flat area, nice bit of netting for like keys so they don't rattle around, and a central bin and okay size door bins as well. So don't go thinking this is a luxury car, don't go thinking it's full of sporty touches because it isn't, it's basically just a regular MG4 with a watermelon colored stitch. If you imagine that, you're in the ballpark. One thing the MG4 is pretty good at is accommodating backseat passengers. This is not a big car, it's not trying to be a family car, but you will be comfy enough in the back. So for myself it's six foot or 183 centimeters, headroom's good, no sunroof on this car. Legroom behind my own driving position is excellent, Tow room is a little bit tight, however. You will get someone in the middle at a pinch. The floor is almost perfectly flat. There are, however, no air vents, which is gonna suck on a summer's day, especially when this car is quite dark in theme with a black headliner. You just get a single USB-A port, very old school, uh, here in the back. You do get some of these little pockets on the back seat, which kind of look like something I've seen in a Volkswagen Tiguan. No center armrest, hard materials. You know, it's spacious enough, it gets the job done. Matte green really suits the MG4, I reckon, and the X-Power certainly looks visually distinct with its orange highlights. Although those front brakes are hiding a bit of a secret, which I'll reveal later in today's video. But boot space is decent, nothing to write home about. It's a regular small hatchback. It's got a decent opening aperture, load height's not too high. We do have some slots off to the left and right so things won't rattle around. And a neat little case here with your granny charger while underneath the boot floor, you've just got a tire repair kit because like almost every EV on the market, the X-Power does not have a spare wheel. Although a lot of hot hatches are like that. 
Running costs for the X-Power are gonna depend on the sort of driving that you do. If you are regularly tapping into this car's torque and you wanna drive it hard on tracks or B-roads, ditch the Bridgestone Taranzas, get a grippier tire. They're not that bad. This thing just needs a little bit more adhesion to get the best out of it. The warranty is seven years of unlimited kilometers. And when it comes to range and charging, well, we put this car through our independent range and charging test. So what is the MG4? X-Power like to drive. Well, the first challenge is putting it in gear. So the direction selector down here can be a little bit finicky. You've really got to slam on the brakes. You get this kind of oddly discordant sound and then you know you are ready to roll. And that's the case with all MG4s, not just this one. So that's a bit of a bug to keep in mind. So I've been driving the X-Power for the last week or so been driving it in town for my commute here in Sydney in traffic Been driving on the highway and also on some of my favorite country roads and that's what we're gonna pull out on in just a second but first of all I've been reflecting on just how astonishing it is to be living in a time where you can get this much power for this little money it really is quite something 320 kilowatts of power, that used to be the domain of hyper hatches. Audi RS3 is not as powerful as this car. A45 AMG, these sorts of names are tens of thousands of dollars more expensive. MG has just walked in and democratized hyper hatch power overnight. So what does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean that this is an electric RS3 for 59,990, unfortunately. But that doesn't mean this isn't a good car in its own way. It just means you have to have the right expectation. I think I've been very excited to drive this car because the base model MG4 is so sweet. The little light rear wheel drive 51 kilowatt hour version is awesome. One of the most impressive cars of this year and under 40 grand before on-road costs is just fantastic. This is a lot more expensive, over 20 grand more, but of course you're getting more than double the power. That doesn't actually make this twice as good though, because big power is not enough to make a great hot hatch, let alone a hyper hatch. In fact, hot hatches in my book are not really about power at all. They're about the chassis that is connected to the vehicle. And that's where <laughs> the MG4 X Power doesn't feel like it's all there. There's no doubt that this is an incredibly fast rapid car both from a standstill and just anywhere the mid-range punch is so exciting in the X power it is really fast and because the MG4 is a small car I think the effect of that huge acceleration is amplified you know Tesla Model S cars like that they're really fast but they're also big heavy plush vehicles the MG4 is light it's a bit noisy it's really small so the fact it just catapults you towards the horizon, I think has even more of an effect than in cars like a Model S, for instance. I really find it quite exciting. Although that effect, as with everything, it wears off once you're used to how unbelievably rapid this car is. You just, there you go, you just squirt into gaps in traffic or wherever you want. And that's when you have to start tapping into deeper levels of capability in order to really get on with the car. I think it's the capability that the base model MG4 has in spades. It's quite a soft car, but it also has 150 kilowatts of power. It's carrying a bit of weight because it's an EV, so it all ends up feeling incredibly well balanced and just really pleasant to drive in almost every way. The thing is the chassis hasn't actually been altered very much in X power form. So this is still a hatch that tends on the side of softness. And I think it's that control which is a little bit limited in this car. I don't think it's that far off becoming a hyper hatch for the history books. Really the first electric hot hatch with serious power sold at a very, very affordable price. But the chassis is not finished, or at least the quality isn't quite there to support the immense power. What do I mean by that? It's all about multiple mid-corner bumps. The sort of thing which occur one after the other on a classic Australian B-road, and maybe on the B-roads where you come from too. What cars have to do on surfaces like these, especially fast cars, is they have to be able to cope with multiple hits 
within a second or two of each other. So the dampers have to respond very, very rapidly in order to maintain body control, keep the tires on the ground as much as possible, keep the contact patch as big as possible, so that when you're getting stuck into the throttle, as you're gonna to wanna to do when you've got 320 kilowatts of power, you are actually able to deploy that power and the car is pointing where you want it to go. There are a couple of sketchy moments on great B-roads like this where the X power just cannot get its body under control quick enough. And so you're pointing at a slightly different target to what you initially anticipated. And if you're stuck hard into the throttle, you are accelerating towards that new target very, very quickly indeed. So I find the confidence isn't quite there to keep pushing on. This is a car where you don't tend to go past about seven tenths because it's just not that great beyond there. So if you can't drive it past seven tenths, why buy the X power? When the lesser MG4s are so sweet, I would suggest they're probably the ones that most people will enjoy buying the most unless you are desperate to have the trick of the immense acceleration in a straight line, which this car is very good at. It doesn't quite have the damping, it doesn't quite have the tires to support seriously rapid B-road travel. Bridgestone Tarantz is not a bad tire, not a ditch finder. They just chirp all the time when you get into the power because there's so much motive force. The motors are similar in output, front and rear, so you actually get a nip of torque steer from the front end at times as well, which is unusual in an all-wheel drive car, but understandable with this mechanical package. There's quite a lot of motor whine, so refinement isn't the goal of the X-Power. All in all, it is a super fascinating car to drive, an interesting car to drive, but one which is incredibly fast, devastating in terms of its acceleration, but the chassis always feels half a step behind the rest of the car. That's not the case in the garden variety MG4s, which are so in balance and so lovely to drive. They're really nice urban runabouts. They're nice as a second car and they're enjoyable on a country road too. The X Power feels like it's biting off a huge amount, maybe a little bit more than the chassis can chew, but I reckon another year's focused chassis development and this thing really could be at its very best. It's just not quite there yet. Lastly, a couple of words on other factors. Visibility outwards is actually pretty good, especially frontwards. The ride quality is soft, as I mentioned, so it's a very comfortable car to commute in. I don't think you're losing much by way of compliance compared to standard MG4s. Rigidity could be better. Hearing quite a lot of creaking in the interior when we go over speed bumps, so that's a little bit annoying. And the safety systems, well, it has a long list of them. The tuning leaves a bit to be desired, particularly lane keeping assist. Not getting a huge amount of centering through the steering wheel, but I am getting a lot of angry beeping, which I had to deactivate as I started this film because nobody wants to listen to that. So what is the verdict on the 2024 MG4 X Power? Well, this vehicle's performance results speak for themselves. Especially in a straight line, its acceleration is just monstrous. It's also reasonably comfortable to drive and commute in, although other MG4s have longer range and lower running costs because they're more efficient. But is this a hot hatch, let alone a hyper hatch? Not really. It's actually just an MG4 with a lot of power. It is maybe slightly more serious than a regular MG4 in terms of chassis tuning, but not nearly enough in order to give this vehicle, the MG4 X Power, what it needs in terms of stiffness and rigidity and compliance in order to tackle country roads and tracks fast while giving you real confidence as a driver. As a result of that, I think the peach of the range actually continues to be the entry level MG4, the Excite 51 kilowatt hour, although the other models with their progressively larger batteries are also very convincing. For me, the X-Power is the least convincing member of the MG4 lineup. It's got an amazing party trick, that counts for a lot, and it looks cool too, but the lesser versions make more sense. That's my opinion, let me know what you think down below in the comments. While you're there, hit subscribe and the notification bell. And as always, thank you for watching Chasing Cars.